Hey guys, we are super, super excited to be announcing that we are part of the second annual Black Effect Festival in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you're bringing your kids this year, just do this. Just do this the whole time. Because it's gonna be a wild and brand new show that you didn't see last year. The date is Saturday, April the 27th. Make sure you head on over to blackeffect.com and get your tickets now. See you there. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. No, you gotta say howdy. Oh, howdy, y'all. We will be in Dallas, Texas Memorial Day weekend for the Together Land Festival headlining May 26th. Make sure you get your tickets now at togetherland.com. Let me let y'all know what this lineup looks like. Wayne, Jeezy's on there, Summer Walker, Drew Hill, bitch. Come out and also see us. We are headlining the podcast stage. Say it again. Headlining. headlining. Head. Headlining. And if you're good at giving that, jump on stage with us. See you soon. Y'all, make sure you get your tickets. May 5th, we are at the Earth Theater in London. Listen, all the black people that live over there, just take that Euro star and come and see us. We're going to be there May 5th. We are having a whole new show, one that you didn't see. This is a part of the Climax Tour. Come through and see it. Make sure you head on over to whorehive.com and get your tickets now. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pore Blade. This is Yon. I'm your girl, Mandy V, a.k.a. Pedestine, a.k.a. Dead Beach. I'm Wheezy. I may be dressed like a lesbian, but... But you are. I got a nigga now. <laughs> I mean, and is. No, I look really gay. Very gay. I don't know. Extremely gay. I mean, I don't look much non-gayer than you right now with the fucking cargos, but, you know... Here's the thing that's interesting about me dressing like this. Don't get me wrong. Like, when I dress sexy... I think men are always like, oh, because I don't like do it up too much. Even drama fucking left a comment on my last thing. Like, all right, chill, sis. My homeboys do not like me looking cute. But I get hit on way more when I'm dressed like this. I don't say I get hit on more when I dress like this. But like, I just went to, uh, I wore these exact pants on set with, uh, when I went on set for 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. And it just made me feel good. Did you hear Mandy? Mello when I was, was like, in front of like, Carmelo like, Anthony. super fire. And I was like... Not Mello complimenting my pants. And then here go Mero. Yeah, she be putting that shit on. And do. And do. And so to me, like, to get complimented by men, I think even, their shit costs a lot. Ours, you know, we could dress fly for, like, $22. And so, like, when men, like, can appreciate that a woman dresses or try to put that shit on without overlooking sexy, I kind of like the compliments from men in that. I think girls, like, um, have a lot of opportunity to start dressing better instead of, like, that, you know, we do a lot of matching sets. I feel like that's been a thing for the last few years. Yeah. And so when you get to, like, kind of play with color and patterns and shit like that, like, we're lucky to have Pinterest and Instagram to teach us, bitch. Because on some real shit, yeah. how was my mama styling on these hoes like that? I don't know. <laughs> but, like, it's very easy to, like, try to learn new colorways, shit like that. So I think... Dudes really appreciate it because for the most part, we, they keep seeing the same shit. Yeah. Um, Anyways, guys, we ain't got a guest today. Uh, I know y'all motherfuckers happy. Goddamn. We I, almost I, did. I almost had to beg. I said, bitch, we need some solo episodes, ho. I'm sitting here talking to the team and they're like, we, we really need some solo well, episodes. Well, we're not fighting, which is crazy. We just had really good opportunities for guests. But bitch, you know, we're like, I need a man. Nah, this bitch. Put Wolf on the mic. I was, yeah. I was a little annoyed. I, th this bitch had niggas fly in. I said, bro, we really don't need guests to fly in. Like, no, no, could, no, no, no. I didn't know he was flying in. Well, two of them flew in. Did they not? Yeah, but she was already in town on okay. her little sex tour. Okay, and what? And then you I didn't know he was flying funny. I could, well, I found out it was a sex tour. When You know, when, when the girls, listen, when the sex worker girls be like, I had three clients Philly. Today. From March 10th to 14th, you'd be like, oh. Uh-huh. Are you in a show? Booking them things. Uh -huh. Booking them things. Um, I ain't mad. Have you been fucking? Huh. <sighs> Have you been sucking? So, uh, y'all on the Pat Rion. Y'all know I got flew out just for a dick suck. Um, <laughs> but I did. <laughs> no, I, no, Mandy, can I say something wait. to you? That was really funny about that Patreon episode. Wait. Mandy was crying because she was really having a tough day. She said, I haven't even been fucking. This podcast is so hard to do. I did suck a dick, but I haven't even been fucking. <laughs> and it was uh, like in the middle of the tears. No, so I um, I did just get some, some ding-a-ling. What the fuck? Don't worry about that. So it was like, this is like, I'm going to call it a, okay, I came up with a name it, with it on live. It's a three-night stand. So Was it a new nigga? This is an old nigga, but I fucked him maybe like a year ago. 
And not when she was wiped up. Uh, no, it was not. It was during a breakup. So, oh, it was a year and a half ago then. Okay. God damn, it's been a long time. So, fucked him like a year and a half ago um, during one of my one of 13 breakups. Um, and literally was like, at one point was like, oh, maybe this could be my side nigga. Didn't end up because, of course, I was in love with fuckboy. Mm. So, anyways, um, ended up going out and we were in the same room. And I was like, text him with the little eyes. I was like, hope you're enjoying yourself. We're in the same room. And uh, then he texted me back. I was like, well, I'm with my friends. He was with his friends. And then I hit him back later and was like, you enjoying yourself? And he goes to FaceTime me. And bitch, it's pitch dark. I'm like, where are you at? Because I'm still at the goddamn, at, at, the, at the spot. He's like, oh, I'm in bed. I said, okay, I'm leaving now. I'll meet you there. <laughs> and I literally... Leave the event. I let my friends know, bitch, got to go. About to go get some dick. And hopped in an Uber and went and got that dick. And it was great. Three was night stand, good. why? I say three night stand because I might fuck him one more again. And then that's about it. I don't think I want, I don't want a, a situationship. I don't want a fuck buddy. I know that that's not what I want. So in the but meantime. But you don't want no dick just when you want it? Literally, in the meantime, between time, I got one more dick session with him. And then that's it. So he going to be my three-night stand. Why can't you produce them? I mean, produce. That's not. Pursue. He is not someone that I'm going to pursue. I am very logical in who could and would be a partner in my life. He is not one. But the way I want to suck and fuck that dick, uh-huh. I knew it. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, a good one. It's a good one. Bitch, I to give him an eight-night stand. Bitch, uh-uh. He getting, he getting one more, one when, more when you wouldn't name where you were at, I remember. I'm like, uh-huh, oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Good for so, you, Mandy. Look at you with the deets. Oh, uh, no, no, no. So it was it was really good. I, I do have, like, my one person right now that I'm kind of seeing. But we just, his schedule's busy, mine is busy, and we have to fly to see each other. So That's tough. it's just not really working out that great. Um, But, yeah, this one, I got one more fuck in me before I'm like, okay, no more fucking. Um, yeah. This was fun. Um, um, maybe we can work together, you know? <laughs> Look at you working with someone you fucked. Shit happens, bitch. Yeah, no, they still won't be on this podcast. Shit. This, no, 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 Let no. me throw some pussy at them when you're done. not be on this podcast. But yeah, uh, so it was cute. We went like three rounds. I just kept making them hard and it was good. I was shocked. So shocked. It was crazy. It's not super big, but it did what it needed to do. Ain't it funny when big niggas don't have big dicks? It's like, bro, is God being fair? No, hey, no, no, no. You're he, rich. He got We're going to make that else. dick a five inch. Rich, fine, beautiful, like. What's wrong and, with him? And I ain't going to hold. The dick was in. I mean, what's wrong with all men? They're liars. Oh, yeah, that's true. Duh. <laughs> and a public liar. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, uh, outside of that, what's been going on with you? Um, Bitch, let me tell you how dick make you dumb. Girl, I got Not invited. Me. You see, I'm smart. I said one more game. I got invited play. to that fucking gold party that Beyonce and Jay throw and literally was like, I got plans to come home be with my boo. I was on the plane like, bitch. Anyway, uh, I went to an Oscar pre-party called The Night Before with Liz Goldwyn. And I realized how black Hollywood I am to the point where like, she was saying names. Oh, have you ever seen this person, this person? I'm like, No. Like, even the black people that be in white shit, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know if I could say what I thought yesterday. So I had a meeting yesterday at New House, which is kind of like a Soho house. Mm -hmm. And I'm in there and I'm looking New around. Oh, is that what it is? New I Way? Think, I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, well, I'm bitch, joking. It, it spelt like house. I don't know. You I know, used like, to say Newy. Bitch, I used to call Houston Street Houston. Bitch, it spelt like Houston. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm at this place and there's a guy sitting directly across from me. White man with the white people hair. And I realized, I was like, he looks like an actor, but also all white men that looks like look like this, I feel like they're actors. And I started realizing that a lot of white men look like white actors. Wait, who was he? He was just a white man that looked like he could have been an actor. <laughs> bitch, hold on. Did you, anyone see my story about Robert De Niro? Oh, bitch, I'm with Akeem. We in <laughs> Tribeca, right? And I was looking real cute. I had on this little tennis skirt and he's taking pictures of me in my little outfit. He's like, you look cute, girl. We had just left the gym. This white man's coming close to me. I was like, I know this white man ain't Robert De Niro, bitch. <laughs> I said, are you John Hamm? Who, mind you, John Hamm is fine as hell. If anyone doesn't know who that is, Google him. He's on, he, why, why? He's on Mad Men. Um, Google Robert De Niro. For some reason, I said John Hamm. I think it's because I had just seen him in a clip. 
And the guy stopped, smiles at me and was like, no, but people do tell me I look like De Niro. And he's like winking at me, turns back two or three times. I'm like, oh, he want to fuck me. So a key, Wait, that, a whole, uh, that's Robert De Niro. You thought Robert De Niro wanted to give you some white dick? First of all, Googled it, all black women. Six black kids, oh. you know, every popping black woman, Naomi Campbell, all of them, bitch. Called my mom and she was like, I could have fucked him. Everybody knows he wants Wait black a second, women. is this right? What? He's 80. Yeah, he look good. Maybe because he's rich. Who can't wait till we talk about the age differences? Bitch, when I tell you, I was she thinking about... to throw that pussy to an 80-year-old. I wasn't going to throw it. She was going to toss it. She said Robert I was De Niro, gonna, yeah. She said I was going to sit this pussy down. I wasn't going to throw it. Bitch, I, I, could, I couldn't it. believe I let it go. You know what made me so mad? So me and the king were hanging out an hour later, right? He was like, girl, he looked back two or three times. And I was like, why didn't I do anything? I could have been saved. I could have laughed horrible. And I would have done my fucking speech online on live and been like, I was doing all the work. I'm tired of Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're doing. I'm just playing. I'm just this playing. This is what we're doing. I'm just playing. This is what we're doing. No, but you did this have a monologue. That was funny. I didn't really do a monologue. I'm just playing. I just said. No, I'm not trying like, to be messy. I was just, no, let's be very clear. A bitch was tired juggling that shit in your ass, Hope. Oh, well, bitch, I, this was a lie. And God damn it, you should feel special. I chose you. I don't need to feel special, bitch. I do an outline, ho. Huh? Creative. Uh, ooh. Come to, the, come to the live shows. Oh, okay. Ha. Don't play with me. Why is you being so petty right now? But I, I also like, don't know on, what, on, what I don't know what the T is. I'm just saying that's, that's what you said. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's what I said. No, I really I don't know. I don't know. That. She might have done said, something and Mandy could have been, 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 been yelling at her and been controlling. I don't know. What I said was it was debilitating to do both. I toured 24 motherfucking cities last year. I was dropping five podcasts a fucking week. So why are you blaming me? So let me be clear, I wasn't blaming you. When I say debilitating, I was doing a lot and I had to drop something to, to, to do the things creatively I wanted to do. Like period sis, like my animated series. Okay, well, I think it's And great. so that was something that was no longer serving me. And I want y'all to know, with y'all petty motherfucking asses, I suggested my ex-co-host to record out of WTF Media Studios. So, so I just would like to say. That is how much, guess what? We're getting along, you guys. And I talked to my motherfucking therapist today and I was mad because I was like, I hate these comments making it seem like me and Wheezy are just awful and hate each other. I said, we've been good since July. <laughs> that is like eight months. <laughs> eight, I was like, bro, we've been good for like a, a good amount of time. <laughs> My nigga was like, why do everybody be acting? Because sometimes he, he is a, a, a family friend that like knows who we are and was like kind of asking questions about it. He's like, why does everybody act like y'all ain't good? Mandy seems chill. I'm like, since when I met you, we got... Bro, no, we done hung out with each other's friends, business partners, lovers, partied at the club together. Like, I mean, no, I think it's... I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. Oh, let me write this mar minute mark down in case we got to bleep it out. I don't think we need to bleep it out. I really believe this. I think that it was... E Not New York sounded like New York. I mean, fuck it. They coming to get me. They said, bitch, stop talking shit. <laughs> no, I think like, honestly, I think you and Bridget recorded too much. I yeah, think that's absolutely. really hard. I think it could have probably been easier if you didn't have to do so much and give up so much of your lives. I agree. You know what I'm saying? I haven't had a Monday off in three years. We were on tour and I was literally catching 6 a.m. flights, landing in New York at 9.30, 10.30, rushing home to drop off luggage to get dressed to go record from 12 to 5 it's, every Monday. And honestly, Bridget seems like, whatever happened between you guys, she seems like a sweet girl. So to me, it doesn't really matter how that person is. It's still like, this is a lot. And then you're almost resenting it because you're like, fuck, I can't even live my life. And it was true. Mandy had to literally, if we had a Sunday show, be on the 5 a.m. flight to record. And I understand that dedication because I've had to do it too with Horrible and then been so like, oh my God, I've got too much going on in life. Like it sucks. But um, I think our relationship improved because you were probably like, okay, this is becoming the easier show. It's not that, I, I feel like that. Whether that's the truth or not, it's, I believe it, that. It's because a little bit of two things. I think that for as much work that, yes, that podcast took, I think being on tour and, and, you know, we ended our tour because of the pandemic. And I think being back in front of the whore hive and seeing how this show has truly impacted people's lives, that knowing that I still don't want children, knowing that I want to put forth something that I do feel like is my legacy, I started also feeling like, I fucking hate that I have to be on the shade room every day and have an opinion about things I really didn't give a fucking uh, I didn't what do you give mean a fuck about. Room? 
we talked current events oh, oh. and we talked music. And I started also just resenting that I had to be so involved with everyone else's lives and going to festivals and dealing with the labels and being in rooms with all of these celebrities that I may or may not have had an opinion about. Like, I remember even fucking being at Dreamville. Literally, Drake's right next to me. And I'm like, ooh, I hope he ain't hear me talk about his nail polish. And I'm literally just like realizing I don't like that that's like I'm now having all of these opinions about people and that I'm having to share space with these people. And maybe they view me in a... It was just... Th there was there was a lot about this show. A, I don't feel like we were building a core audience. And to be very clear, I made the decision to leave back in October, November. I had the conversation with you. so. This was almost a six, six, seven months ago decision for me. And it was because, and this is, this is the part where I am so, like, this is where I feel the most happy. Our UTA agents, uh, six months before our deal ended, started having conversations with other people. And we're taking calls. Honestly, all the people that got damn bankrupt now. So we're having all these calls for a new deal. We're having all these other options and seeing what it is. Was it as much money? Not as much, but I ended up literally taking a phone call and I'm like, I wouldn't do this for another million dollars. Then they were like, well, how much do you want to do it for? And nothing in me was like, there wasn't a dollar amount. Nothing moved me to want to do this anymore. And I was like, wow, I'm not doing something for money. And well, I've been dealing I think with that's that. a good thing well, to I've been, know. I've been dealing with that with my therapist. Because that tells you it's not bridging. Not only that, I just talked to my therapist today. There's not a price on my pussy right now. I literally, I swear to God. The one I'm on. Not, I literally was like, wow, I can't imagine even laying down for a certain dollar amount. Like, and clearly that was a lot of my 20s, my late teens. And so to be able to walk away from the idea of money or a price tag at all, like, felt really good for me because I've done a lot of things that I didn't want to do for money. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm sitting here talking to my agents and literally can't give them a number as to for one episode a week. Oh, there wasn't going to be two episodes a week ever. There wasn't a dollar amount for me to do one episode a week. Of but that's what I'm saying, though. I think it's good to know that, like, the content itself was stressful because, you know, like, with the whole Call Her Daddy breakup, the thing that I really couldn't stand about Alex Cooper was not honoring Sophia. And... I think it's tough when you watch. What do you mean honoring? Just being like, yo, I'm, I've, I've, I've had this new accolade in life. Like I've done these things. I had a partner. And I think like, even if it gets dicey in the end, like it's good to be like, yo, I experienced this with this person. Like, you know, to have a show for only three years and be able to tour it and do all the things you did. Like oh, that's, that's and great. And I'll live with that forever. I also right, know now saying, that I can create music another stuff. product. I can do another successful thing. I have, I, I had the opportunity my show with MTV, the opportunities I've had with Revolt, the, the 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 things that I'm doing now, I don't think those opportunities come to me without, see, the thing is. That's good. So Bridget and you definitely were able to, like, come into each other's lives to have good ventures later. It's great, and I hope that she's able to use the platform that we both built to catapult her into whatever's next for her. Same. Like, I think that it's it's like each other, right? Like, I say all the time that, I'll never forget the day I walked into that house and Kenya Barris came up to me. It was like, oh my God, I love horrible decisions. I'll always remember that because people think I applied for some fucking job or wanted to run some company. I just like, honestly, no. And it's crazy because <clears throat> last week when I was working with him and he introduced me to someone, they had no idea that my work had been in sex for eight years, seeing me on set, right? For the last week. And people don't understand how many little things in your life will get you to that bigger space. I agree. And so, like, everybody's a part of our journey. And that's what I mean about the call her daddy shit. I just kind of find it in poor taste not to be like, yo, I popped hard with somebody. Yeah. M whether Alex Cooper did more work than Sophia or not, you still did it with this person, right? And I think, like, it can be in really poor taste not to acknowledge the journey. So I think it's great that you can publicly say that. Yeah, because no, a course. lot of people can't. Of course. And, and I think that... At the end of the day, we end as human beings. We leave jobs. We, we end relationships. We end friendships. We end romantic partnerships. Things end. And I say it all the time. I don't believe in anything lasting forever. This was never supposed to last forever. And so to be, um, for people to have all their think pieces in me doing 
what everyone in their life has done. They've all left a job. They've all ended a relationship. They've all walked away from something that wasn't serving them anymore. That's all I did. And I'm, I'm excited for what I'm doing next. I have my animated series coming out. Period. This will be back out That's April, great. April 3rd. Um, and as you guys know, y'all can now tune into Across Generations, which is an idea to launch in Will Packer Productions, where I'm producing a show that's that's great. And it's it's me growing and getting, you know, to the bag, huh? Listen, I love being behind the camera. Um, the bit, best advice I ever got was, was Kenya saying, yo, congrats on your season three for your show. I said, thank you. And he goes, why are you even in front of the camera? You could make 15 shows and make 15 times oh, that's, the amount of money. Oh, that's the goal. And listen, it is, it's it. Like, I think Alex taught me that a lot too with our studio. Like, I didn't understand having spaces, different places, having presence, being able to put your name on something and make more of them. Like, that's the goal. Like, one of my homeboys does a party. Y'all go to Jerk and Jell Off whenever you see it somewhere. That nigga will have three parties, Detroit, New York, LA, same night, mm -hmm. and only be at one, if none. Mm -hmm. And that's what you've got to do, right? You've got to make your presence in a bunch of places so that you're just your name associations where people want to be. Low key, I want to do a fucking horrible decisions fucking uh, party night, like a ladies night. And we may not be there. It's just a high run in there, right? Like, right. that's how you get bread. And I want to learn what the fuck these rich people do. Saw that shit in that Oscar party, bitch. Oh, no. I Did you know, know Margot it. Robbie produced Barbie and Saltburn? And Saltburn, bitch. Margot Robbie, baddest white bitch. I'm sorry. She, I think it's Margot Robbie and Scarlett Johansson. Those are the ones, right? Never knew that. Literally, Angelina, I like her too. Oh, Angelina, she sorry. But I'm like, thinking new school. Girl, she just opened a cafe. I saw it on my TikTok. Yeah, but in Basquiat's old house, I don't like that. It, yeah, it is. You saw it too on the TikTok? Yeah, preserve, like, pre preserve the artist shit. Uh, you kind of whitened it up. But anyway. Well. um, But I no, like, like uh, just knowing that, right? I fucking love Saltburn. And uh, I didn't really love Barbie, but I love her. But knowing you produce these things that are getting Oscars, Oscar nominated, like, who the fuck would think she got it? From Wolf I'm of Wall Street. you didn't like Barbie. It was okay. You're such a feminist. I actually didn't think it showcased enough. Oh. I wanted a oh, fat Barbie. Oh, extra feminist. I, I just kind of was like, this is a surface. Wait, like, you didn't like it because there wasn't a fat Barbie? I'm just saying, like, we're not talking about representation. You still made her tiny and white. We should have had Barbie, like, show the flaws, like... I don't know. There was a few things in there that they, they missed. It. When she became human, she had cellulite. She was like, what the fuck is this? She was still Barbie, though. Well, Barbie is Barbie. They're, all the other girls was named other things. It wasn't enough. But anyway, okay. um, we only have one black Barbie, Issa. Okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so I got into some weird shit recently. So if you're listening to the show, it's probably March 19th or 18th. My birthday is the 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Feel free to send me money. It's fine. Um, wow. What? I thought you hated when people did that. Oh, yeah, but I'm doing a donating thing this year. Oh, okay. All right. You'll see it. So, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah. I, uh, had Valentine's Day shit that I want to talk about. We haven't been in the studio. This may not be everybody's thing, but this was definitely my kink, and it was super consensual because I let him know before that I wanted this. Bitch, when I tell you got 50 shades of black in this house, so... I never really go to my boo's house because we always party downtown. So he's like, fuck it. And I got a dog. So it's normally my place. So Valentine's Day, he plans it out, right? I get to his crib. He makes me dinner. It's so sweet. He acts like a waiter. Like in very traditional Valentine's Day with the bear and the flowers and the card. It was so sweet. So we don't really smoke weed. Like it's not really our thing. But he tells me to smoke. And I didn't really understand why. But I listen. I do this on top. So he's like, I want you to hit this real quick. I'm like, all right. So then I, he tells me to smoke again. And then he's like, do you have to go to the bathroom? And I'm like, does he want me to pee on him? Now he laced your shit. No, no, no. He, and oh. I'm like, no. I look, that's where my mind And he's went. like, I How don't do need interruptions. he's like, you need to use the bathroom. Did you hear it? So this is, um, this, your brain is my brain. I'm like, what is he talking about? He's like, do you have to pee? Go pee. I don't want any interruptions. So I'm like, okay. So bitch, I go pee. He tells me to get on the bed because he's about to give me a massage. He ties me with restraints to each part of the bed, right? I'm a fucking starfish right now. And I'm high. The legs too? Yes. Ankles and wrists. And literally... I just want to say shout out to him. That means he lifted his mattress without your help because you got to put it under Oh, the I mattress. thought about it. Oh, yeah. And bitch, I, let I me tell you how. Home. I'm a wah, 
man. All I could think when my boo done fucking did this shit for me and Valentine's Day was so sweet and our first Valentine's Day together, I was like, is this new? Or you had this here? Because, nigga, how many bitches you tied up before? What the fuck did you do last year, February 14th? Anyway, but I tried to let that thought go. <laughs> so, so he's giving me a massage, right? And it's so sweet. And he's rubbing me down. And then finally, he gets something to blindfold me. We pick a safe word. And he starts to like spank me, right? And like, I feel a lot because I'm high. And remember, y'all, blindfolding is quote unquote basic. But when you remove a sense, you feel the rest, right? So I just got rubbed down and oiled. I'm super relaxed. And then I just feel all these like slaps, these spanks. And the next thing I feel is like what I think, because he never showed me, was a pinwheel. Okay. So he's like putting that up and down my body. And I'm like giggling and shit. And he's <laughs> this bitch felt so high. He's like, why the fuck are you laughing? I'm like, I don't know. Bitch, I just, it was just, I was giggling. So I kept laughing and shit. And he told me to stop talking. I kept talking. And the next thing I feel is just, these sharp pokes in my leg, on my skin, and what almost feels like slices. So I'm like laughing at myself because I'm like, it's not a real knife. You know what I mean? Like, because I remember Dash, the rope bondage guy, told me he uses credit cards to make you feel like a slice. And like, I know he's not going to hurt me. So I can't stop giggling because I'm like, oh my God, baby, you're so scary. I don't trust these niggas that much. Then I keep getting spanked. Next thing you know, he starts eating my pussy. And now I'm getting fucked, right? And we're having sex and it's fucking great. But he's also using like the pinwheel thing again. Bro, it's so many feelings. Like I literally, it was overstimulated to the point where I'm coming like crazy and I can't see. So I don't know who's fucking me. That sounds stupid. But like, really, I'm just like, what's going on? That's how high I am. So finally, because I kept talking, right? And he was tired of me talking. He comes. Because you don't listen. He said, shut the fuck up. He did. <laughs> so uh, he's done. He comes on my face and I, mind you, didn't stop talking. Bitch, this nigga basically was still punishing me. Girl, why he left me there tied up with the come on my face while he took a shower and was doing shit around the house? When I tell you I was in super sub mode, literally tied up. I was like, can I get out? No. I was like, oh my God, I hate that I thought this shit was hot. What is wrong with me and my sick fucked up brain that I just wanted to be left with come all over me? Do you know how in my mind, that just made me so angry because I'm claustrophobic. So the idea of not being able to move. Why well, didn't use my safe word? Fuck whatever subby shit. Bitch, she in the shower. What if I wanted to get up at the, at the exact <laughs> moment? I'm literally just thinking like, oh my God, I would have been so angry. Oh, like, no. He kept talking to me while I was doing it too. But you never shut the fuck up, right? I was like, yeah. bitch, I loved it. And I realized how stimulated I am at dirty talk. I didn't even need him to touch me, bitch. I almost came just from that thought of just like being left. It's so fucked up. So anyway, mind you, I said he came on my face, right? <laughs> oh, he had like started flaking, huh? Hold on. He had jury duty in the morning or something. So he was like, fuck. He had to drive me back. It's like one in the morning, we're tired. The cum was sitting on my face. So it was kind of seeping into my eye. So you never wiped your face off? Well, after. But mind you, like, how is it seeping into your eye, bitch? Because it was like on my lash. Bitch, if it sit there for a long time, I don't know. It dries up, baby. No, it doesn't. I don't know what type of cum I'd have had, though. That motherfucker be real quick to dry up, flake off, peel off. Like, the shit don't stay... Well, like, as a, you've as never a seen someone's eyes be super red. Like, even Kazumi just posted. She, like... No, had... I get when that comes in your eyes, but you say you're feeling this when you're in the car? This is... Oh, no, I'm going to tell you when that happened in the car. So, once we I get cleaned up, I realize too much cum went in my eye. Okay. So we get to the car, bitch, and I can't, like, I lost my vision on one side. So, so no, I'm not joking. Like, he really had to help me in the car. And so he said, he's looking at me while he's driving. He's like, baby, are you okay? He said, I turned around like this. Okay. <laughs> one eye open, bitch. I couldn't see for like 12 hours, Mandy. It was so bad. I don't know what the fuck. Y'all, I'm telling you right now, if a nigga even gets close to coming, you must close them tight and squint like a booty hole, bitch. Clinch. I never again going to kind of try to see what's going on. Holy shit. I thought I was going to die. And then all I could think when I was Googling with one eye is like, can you, can, will I get blind? <sighs> I saw the squiggly line. I could see the sperm swim. It was so bad. 
It was so bad. You know she lying. No, I'm not. But Valentine's Day was great. I love him so much. Anyway. <laughs> um, no, it's really sick. It's like this point of like, it's like two, two puppy love, two in love right now. And I'm like, I literally said yesterday, I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm just starting to get anxiety because like everything's right. And he's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, this is healthy. This is safe. Like, you should not feel like this because you're happy. And I'm like, uh, bitch, I'm ready to look under his bed and see if there's a hole under there. Like, I don't know oh what the fuck God. is wrong. I don't like it. Anyway, everything's fine. But so I did nice play for my first time. And I only know that it was now real knife play because when I was getting dressed, I said, what the fuck is that butter knife? You had a real knife, nigga? He's like, well, yeah, I didn't have a steak knife. He was really using a knife? He didn't get one of them knives from the from the sex store? But it was a butter knife. <laughs> I Ain't will tell you though, butter knife felt real. It does because you feel it. Mind you, it wasn't sh- making me bleed, Mandy. But he was just like tapping it on my skin. I would have known that shit was butter knife because it's round and it is. It's that it's not pointed. It's round. Bro, you can't you. feel it. I'm telling you, you. That's what I'm saying. It's round. I only it ain't felt even pointed. I felt this. I felt like on my. The ridge ain't a lot on a butter knife. They felt enough when you blindfolded, bitch. What the fuck type of butter knives y'all got? I got the ones from Amazon. And have you ever been blind, blindfolded and tied by your wrists and ankles? I've done this. Yes, actually. And when you were blindfolded, did he pull a knife out and say, bitch, I'm a... No, because I don't have a murder uh, fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely... Like, I told you when the nigga used to put the motherfucking pillowcase over my head, I was like, all right, now. Get me the fuck up out of here. I did it for a little bit because he wanted to do it. Now, I remember like when it. Mia Dark came on and she was like, oh, she chloroformed a nigga? I was like, yeah, I like that. Yeah, nah. I'm good on all that. Um, I, Again... And I, I tell my mom all the time, bitch, you shouldn't have had me watching Lifetime at seven years old. Now I think that every every man has the ability to kill a bitch. No, it's kind of sick of where my brain goes because I don't want to die, die. I just want to feel scared. And then also, you know, the aftercare is such a great thing, too, once it's over and you get the kissing and the cuddles. Like, I do appreciate men that learn about, like, a sub drop because I've had an experience where I got slapped in the face and I asked for it. And then there was no aftercare. And it's just like all that adrenaline went down. I felt really sad. It was weird. I'll say, and maybe because this relationship is newer. I had this much fun and I was this adventurous with my ex in the beginning. As I started losing trust from him due to his behavior outside of the bedroom, I realized that in the bedroom, my mind started going to really dark places. And I remember Mm. literally thinking, Or feeling unsafe with him choking me when I normally wasn't. Like, my mind would go to, we done broke up so many times, this nigga hates me. And so I did. I I used to, I actually took a break from us engaging in play like that because there was no way for me to trust him in the bedroom knowing that I didn't trust him I don't want to say it's newer. I don't want to say that it's because it's newer. We need to be dating people that make us feel safe. And when we are feeling unsafe in love, not blaming you because I stayed with Old Bay too. We need to leave these niggas. No, of course. Because well, I well, realize now. Clearly. I felt so I mean, it's easier to bad, say, bro. to leave these niggas. No, no, it's not easy. easier to say, bro. No, it's, we it's need to do to it. Than do. It's easier to say than do. It just is. Like, I want to keep both stay saying this. People. Yeah, I'm saying, like, I want to keep saying this because I want to not be ever so in love to where I ever do that again. But I will say, being in an over-communicative relationship at this point, like, there was this moment where... And this is probably as deep as I'll ever go into. And we've never fought, which is really nice. Um, The bickering is not there. It's just very deep conversations about how we're making each other feel. But we went to an Oscar party together. And there was a cute girl that he was talking to. And I was right next to him. And I caught myself thinking if I went to the bathroom, he would get her number. Which is so crazy. Because literally, these are all my friends. Why would he do this to me, right? In a logical way. Like, why would this person do that rationally? And we got in the car, I told him that. And he was like, yo, like, I'm not going to embarrass you. I understand, like, you've been embarrassed before. I'm not going to embarrass you. Like, you you have to believe and trust that, like, you're allowed to have something healthy, that you can feel free, that we can talk to other people in a room. And I don't police anything he does. But, bro, that literally happened to me with Old Bay. I, I hosted a Guys Next Door live show. He went to get drinks for me and my friends and was outside with a bitch, like, it was just so tough. And now I have to relearn what openness is like mm-hmm. and like safety is like. And so where I've been to the point where like I start my trust at zero and then it goes to 100. Now I'm trying to do it the other way. Right. So I'm trying to think to myself, OK, what has he shown me? Like 
what's going on? Like, am I feeling happy day to day? Like, it, it's really crazy because I when think in- though that that sounds great. Again, leaving when you don't feel safe anymore sounds great, but in engaging in sex with someone, it's easier than not to feel unsafe with a partner who you feel like is not opening up emotionally, right. who is lying, who has betrayed your trust. And so where, where again, I'm speaking from my own personal experience and a lot of the experience of, of my friends and my circle and maybe a lot of people listening, the way that they show up outside the bedroom in ways just innately, unfortunately, make you feel unsafe. And it's unfortunately very hard to feel safe with men. I, I'm, I agree or with people you. I've general. talked about a lot of pain on this show. And what I'm saying, the commitment to myself, I know it's easier said than done. I'm not staying with someone again that does this. Me neither, which is why I said I'm going to fuck that like, nigga one I, more time. I don't even and want... And I go have a... No, I, but you're, he's not being, doing something bad. No, he's not, but it's me being in, in reality. No, that's not what I'm talking no, about. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is I know that I do not want a situationship or a casual sex ordeal with someone again new. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to fuck him one more time because I do want to fuck one more time. Yeah. And then moving forward, I know I'm going to intentionally only put myself specifically sexually, out into the world as someone who is emotionally available to love and receive love. And it's and crazy because yes. when you're in it and it starts to feel good, we're so people, men that date men, women that date anybody. When you've been hurt by somebody before, all you can do is sometimes compare. And I'm really unlearning that. And I've been through so much therapy and I was ready to date when I met him. I didn't realize I wasn't ready to like fall in a deep love without being scared. So that shit is like really fucking with me, bro. Like sometimes when my mom talks about how great he is or they've made jokes about kids together, I'm like, stop telling me. Like, I don't want my mom to say it to me anymore because I don't want to like over fantasize the idea. And I realize like, this is trauma. My white friends don't go through this, bro. These white bitches do not be acting like this. They have their own traumas. They do, but I just feel like there's some, it just, it, I saw something on Twitter about this, about like how come white people be posting their partners, but we don't. I don't know if that shit is real or not, but like, I feel like the trauma that my white homegirls have been through is kind of different. For example, someone, one of my black male friends in his 50s said this to me. He said, we are from a society where having multiple women is cool. Pimp shit, player shit, rappers, whatever. Or we had the cool uncle, always had a different bitch. He was like, <laughs> right? He said, white people's trauma is this like, ghosting shit, never getting committed. He's like, it's this different thing. It's this hierarchy of money, not feeling like you're enough. And he was like, it's more about the woman than it is. I don't, I don't remember how he said it, but I do agree to that. To some, I, I agree to some point when it comes to black men. So I, I think you're leaving. I don't think white men have that player think, shit mentality. Well, I think you're leaving out a big part of what? just our history uh, as the black community. So we had the crack epidemic in the 80s. And in the 90s, black men leaving black men well, leaving the home. It's not only black men leaving the home. And this is this comes from my own personal upbringing and 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 my environment. When welfare was introduced, you literally got government assistance and you couldn't have a man in the home. If a man if if you got a welfare check and male shoes were found, your government assistance could be taken away. So they they created also this almost need for or unfortunately, our community, and, and let's be very clear, white people are on welfare and government assistance as well, but it almost pushed the narrative that being a single mother, you received more help than if you were See, in See, you're talking about something different, which no. I still agree with, though. What, you're, what am I talking to about To me, different? what you're talking about is the notion that, like, women and their independent, like, this bag you're in is a conversation of women don't need a man type shit. Like, I think that... No, they still wanted a man. I know, but there are, but I do believe some of that has to do and is coupled with women feeling stronger alone, feeling like they have to get used to being alone because that's where they learned it from. I'm talking about I, men simply having the need to have more women. That's not what... I don't think so, these two are related. So, no. If we're talking about the reason why maybe you feel that Black people hide their relationships, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, hiding relationships. That's okay. what we were talking about. You're talking about men wanting multiple partners. If we go back to... Way back in the day, everyone had multiple partners. I think that that's what's great about this show now. We're just now able to have the conversations around non-monogamy and people are forthcoming with that. But men have always had multiple families. Men, had multiple all families. men are cheaters. Like, I mean, I'm sorry. 
Most like, men are cheaters. Like, I don't think black men are cheating more than white men white or anything. Men, no, they but, all got multiple things. But I do think cheating is more celebrated with men us. Men is jumping through the middle I believe that. I actually I don't, don't, know how they I don't think if there's even a room to argue that. Niggas having a lot of bitches is cool, in, according to rap music, hip-hop. That has just been a culture, bro. White music don't talk about hoes and having a bunch of bitches in music. Like, it's just not like that. Girl, you better they listen make, to country. Okay. Country music talks about it. Like, I don't want to put this on. I think rock, rock music talks about rock sex, music. rock, and roll. But even yes. in terms of side bitch, main bitch, white people ain't never... What, what what term was that? Mistress? And even then, they've always painted in this high-class way. And you have this... Like, it, it's a there's a picture. And I, again, think, yes, mistresses were never celebrated. They was always looked down upon. Black men having multiple women is celebrated. It just is. And so that's, that's the same way boys growing up are pushed into manhood. Like, go have sex. And women are told to protect their, their bodies. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just a difference in, period, the way men are viewed in society and women. We're not going to get away from that. And I also don't think that it's a, a race thing. I think it's just how we are. I don't, I, I do, bro. Black gender. men are being amazing about... fathers right now. They're more active in their, I'm, I'm in not kids. Saying they're not at all. No, no, no. I'm saying, you're saying you don't think we're going to get away from it. I think that there needs to be more dialogue and celebration about whether it be monogamy with black men, black men honoring their wives, whether or not there's rumors about LeBron cheating on his wife or not. The image of him and Savannah and his perfect all American family is so important for black men and women to see just to know that it could be possible and there, and you just brought up the rumors that there, because there could, there's there's rumors with everybody. We want to take everybody down when they're happy. That's just true. But I'm saying like we need to see more of that shit. I love seeing Sierra and and, and Russell Wilson. Matter of fact, I'm gonna actually say something crazy. When Natalie Nunn got with her husband and she was posting all that family content, I thought that was super cute. And I don't like her, but I kind of liked seeing it. Like, okay, city girl got a man. Like, I think it's really good and healthy to see these types of things. And we need more of that shit. But unfortunately, because we don't have it, we're all just so used to like expecting a man to cheat on us and leave for another woman. And I do think it has to do with the shit that's been perpetuated in black culture. Even masculinity is associated with multiple women. Look how we look at Russell. Like he's a bitch because he didn't took on another man's kid or whatever. Like it's the most manly thing you can do. I just, I don't know if white people are having that kind of celebration when it comes to bitches. Like I just, I don't see it. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I don't think it does to the degree in we, which we have it. I wouldn't know. I don't hang with crackers. Yeah. You literally, I can't speak on white people, but I, I guarantee you they talk, they deal with the same shit we do. In a different, they just say it different. Well, you know what I mean? We play in space, they're playing beer pong. It's just a different, you know, it's the same shit. We had a house party. We just do different shit. Um, <laughs> well, let's talk about something else that we're going to fight to the tooth about. I wonder, I don't. I no, wait, wait. I want to start with white news first, because I actually just <laughs> found this out from one of my white friends. And I keep talking about this white bitch because I helped her move. So I've been with a white friend for two days. OK, so I was like, yo, do you know who Drea is? She's like, yeah, I love a basketball girl. So I'm like, did you hear what happened about Drea? She's like, bitch, this reminds me of Miley Cyrus's mom. Has anybody heard about this? I love Miley Cyrus. I fucking love that we don't know what the fuck is going on in the white world because Liz Goldwyn had to fill me in at that Oscar shit. So Miley Cyrus's mother's name is Tish Cyrus. OK, okay. she just got married to a man. I know her, her daddy, Billy Ray. She just got married to a man named Dominic Purcell. Ooh. so what color is he? I don't know why I think okay. there is another daughter, a sister, Miley's sister, Noah. Half sister, full sister. I don't know. Okay. But what I do know is Noah dated the man, Dominic Purcell. They have been seeing each other for a time before he entered a relationship with her mother. They were seeing each other in a friends and benefits way on and off. They stopped seeing each other. And then something with Tish, her mother, started up. The source further claimed that the youngest sister was offended by the relationship, saying that her mom knew she had been seeing her. He had been seeing her. Um, the mother never gave her a chance to talk about this before they got married. She hired security to make sure that the daughter wouldn't show up to the wedding. And she's been spiraling out of control, trying to figure out a way to defuse this. And so Miley Cyrus claimed she had no idea. Uh, everybody's saying that's not true. Noah, the sister, confronted her mom about it, thinking it was so strange of a situation, but she loves her mom, wants her to be happy, and then uh, basically said she's going to remain loyal to Billy Ray. They've had a close relationship, and she doesn't approve of her new man. 
So, yeah, this is a great example of white news that's already happened in black culture. We literally, a year or two ago, were talking about how Diddy was dating Lori Harvey. Before Diddy started dating, Lori Harvey was dating his son. Oh, right, right, right. So, again. But I don't know if that was true. Oh, it was true. Dating, dating? Dating. I think it was the Christian Combs one. Can we can we fact check it? Because everybody I, I hangs Christian. out with them. Or is it, it was Quincy. Bro, they, they was all- dating. Okay, so they, maybe she wasn't dating anything. And then she, she, was was. she was on, on the yacht. yacht. She was on that yacht, bitch. Baby, she was alone. She was. With just the chefs and the motherfucking captain. <laughs> bitch. With the chefs and the captain. Uh huh, you see, look. And then you went, it's the same shit. See? Black people, white people doing the same goddamn shit. No, that shit's sick. Well, well, actually. Okay, he didn't marry her, but that's the only difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't that marry. Is. Um, but everybody only got a year contract with Lori anyway. So. Um, Drea Michelle, who, God, I love her body. She is inspo to me. Drea Michelle, 39 years old, Mm -hmm. um, is having a baby with NBA star Jalen Green, who, um, just turned 22. He was 21. Um, there's a 17 years age gap. Uh, everybody thinks it's weird. I'm not going to make the long story long, but I will say her son is the same age. Yep. So. You think we're going to disagree on this? I feel like you're going to say it's not wrong, and I think it is. Okay. The reason I do is mainly because of her kid. I think it's weird. I also think it's very strange when men date women the same age as their daughters. Um, one of my favorite 90 Day Fiance people is the dude with no neck, Ed. Actually, last year on my birthday, someone sent me a cameo from him. That was cool. But I remember his daughter, the, the thing on the show was his daughter wouldn't talk to him because he was dating a girl younger than her. I do think it's super weird when people date someone the same age as their kids. I understand sex and experiences and like, Maybe this fun thing. I understand paying for sex, like sex work could be younger. Like, but I I do think it's weird. I think Drea is gorgeous. And I think she's in the industry enough to get anyone she wants. I understand Jalen Green is super rich and making money, but I find it predatorial and I don't think it's a good look. Okay. So I don't have a problem with it. I don't see a problem with it. I think it's very hard to talk about um bringing up the age of your son. She had her son, I believe it's 17. Like, it was a teenage pregnancy. Doesn't matter what kind of pregnancy I, it was. Th- that's fine. Uh, well, I'm well now about, I, this I'm, is a teenage pregnancy. I, I, so, and that's, so that's my problem. Oh, oh, one wait. One moment, one moment. The one ex-girlfriend moment. babysitter. No, no, we should no. talk about so that. So that is my problem. My problem is this relationship with a 39 and a 22 year old being misconstrued as predatorial, as pedophilia, as grooming. Um, I wanted to read uh, because I think that we've been talking about these words so much and it, 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 it really bothered me. Grooming is when someone builds a relationship, trust, and emotional connection with a child. Grooming in adult relationships is all about control and dominance. Grooming is a form of manipulation that is often extremely difficult to spot when a person doesn't know what to look for. Mm. Now, in this specific relationship, you have a man who is 22 years old. Mm-hmm. I don't want to use 22 years old as a child. That is not a child legally. Second off, he's even old enough to drink and do everything else except maybe rent a car. But he could do literally everything else. And he could rent a car. It's just going to be a higher, a a little deposit. I guess he got it. So my problem is conflating this with men who literally are grooming children or teenagers or high schoolers. This is a grown man who, mind you, in terms of maturity, he is in his career, the career that he will probably have for the next 15 to 20 years of his life. Um, he has bills. He probably provides and takes cares for majority of his family. He has adult things that he is dealing with and handling. And at 22 years old, while a woman or a man can get married at 22 years old, and if it's two 22-year-olds, no one bothers with it, I actually feel like a baby in this dynamic with a woman who already has two children with a woman who has already been a mother, I think that the child has a better chance of having a better upbringing in this scenario than two 22-year-olds having a child together. You think that a child with a 21-year-old kid who just became... She also has another kid that she had with Orlando. I know. I'm talking about him as a dad. You think this situation is super great? Like... Here's the thing. No situation situation is going to be perfect, but let's... To me... Growing up with no resources of money, I, and this again could be my ignorance, I do believe my upbringing could have been a lot easier, not only on my mom, but on our household had we had a little bit more fun. Now, I recently saw something that said 
uh, a child having a happy home actually has more to do with the mother's health than finances, which I believe. But and I will say this. seem healthy. Um, and is financially did I bring, enough. Did I bring up Ursula Burns on this podcast yet? Who? No, I didn't. Ursula I, I, Burns. I literally didn't hear No, 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 I didn't. Ursula Burns uh, is a black billionaire. I recently produced something that she was a part of. And I had no idea that she was a billionaire when I met her. But she made a joke about like, how her and Oprah back in the day used to go back and forth on the Forbes list. She she was the first black woman CEO of Xerox. And she said something about being happy, healthy, and kind. And how these are the things that make you sleep well at night. This is what will bring you prosperity when you're this type of person. You're just going to live a good life this way. I believe that. I've met a lot of rich people and a few billionaires that do not have that attitude, right? I say all that to say, she didn't grow up with money and literally said, I had no idea that I'm, she's like, I knew I was poor, but I didn't because my mom was so about making us happy, healthy, and kind people. Like, I believe that we're putting way too much pressure on the family dynamic as we know it and money as we know it. There is a, there's all, look at all these people all over the world that are happy. Drea and all of these types of girls online who are dating the rich guy, we're all fucking thinking these kids are living happy lives because they're super wealthy. That's not fucking true, bro. I will, I will say, and this is with the utmost respect, and I don't want you to feel offended when I say Because this. I grew up with money? You grew up, you, with both, you grew up with both parents and money. Mandy, you're going to tell me that kids with money haven't suffered? I'm, Do you I, know how I did, Wait, up? one moment. I did not say that, and you're putting words in my mouth. I will say, as someone who did not grow up in that way, where, again, I literally was in a shelter for a year. My Christmases were dependent on the Salvation Army. We had certain foods only if we had food stamps, Section 8, to where I couldn't go on certain field trips or I had to ask my friend's parents to pay for me on field trips. I will say, if there was even just a little bit more money for how we grew up, and my mom could only do what she did as a single parent, my dad not speaking to me because she wanted more child support. I just, I, I get where you're coming from and with all sincerity, Without growing up with those things, I'm telling you, things could have or in my mind be better. And I'm not saying that Jalen Green I'm is saying, not going to promise no, a good that's life. Fine, but I, again, also being a woman who is raising multiple children to sit here and put healthy, healthy kind. I don't think I even went to the dentist until I was in middle school because we didn't have the money to. I'm just talking about like you're getting you're getting you're you're. You're getting a surface and I'm getting deeper than no, you No, I'm getting deep because I'm bringing up no. really what this was like. Happy, healthy, kind. This girl was talking about how her, her mom made sure they were active, how they were doing certain things. I'm just simply saying we can't act like because the nigga's rich, they're going to have a good life. How many basketball players are barely giving these women money? We talk I, about Brittany Renner, who's barely getting shit from her baby daddy, who's rich. We see time well, and time again. Crazy? I never brought up Jalen's money. I said that you because, you did no, you no, said no, you just no, said no, money no 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 I did not you're you're bringing up money no you brought up money one and you're moment you, one you moment had more. I brought up that Drea at thirty my only point in this whole thing was not money at all I didn't my, hear you not talking about money that, that's literally how we started fine. talking about money yeah you you brought up money because of the the billionaire no I my only point in this was that I think that Drea at thirty nine years old already being a mother of two and Jalen at twenty two this dynamic of th that parenthood and that structure actually seems healthier and would create an even better child than two 22-year-olds. That's That was my point. I mean, I didn't bring up money. The only reason I talked about that billionaire lady is because she started poor. That was to your point. When I'm talking about the Drea in this scenario, I just think that it's very clear she wouldn't be dating this. He's a kid to me. Maybe he's a consenting kid, but like, he's young. He's not a kid. Okay, he's 21. We got to stop using those words. This is not a kid. He's 22. Okay. He's a 21-year-old grown man. If she, he was not rich, she wouldn't be with him. And I, it, clearly, Dre is a baddie. She deserves to be with a rich nigga. I do think a 21-year-old young man who hasn't even experienced life yet, I think it's fucking weird. And m mind you, we have different opinions, but it is all because of money. And I say that it's a very like strong point. I know I was fortunate enough to have two parents, but I don't think that this is going to be the healthiest thing. I don't think they're going to be on together. That nigga's 21, 20, 22 years old now. He's about to live an amazing fucking life, get all this pussy thrown at him. Drea's only going to get older. Like, she don't want to be in the fucking clubs keeping up with this nigga. Could be with Daddy after the same age, it ain't going to last forever. That's very true, but it's not just to say that 
they'll have the healthiest scenario. I just, I don't believe it. I think if shit, if Sierra didn't meet Russell, who knows how Future's life would be, right? Like you, you don't know. Like money is just such a small factor of the health of this kid because so many women fucking get pregnant by these rich niggas and we see every tabloid in Sheru laughs at them because they don't get enough child support. Like you said, be- you said healthy, kind, and what was the other one? Kind of happy. If, if Jalen and, and Drea are both healthy, kind, and happy, do their ages matter? Well, I mean, you're saying in, the, in terms of them being parents? In terms of, yeah, being a family. My, I, my opinion is that it's weird. Okay. Right? I, I, and you, yeah, you can hold that. A lot of people agree Yeah, with that. I mean, I'm not saying that this kid, like, I'm, I'm not saying that uh, Drea won't have a healthy pregnancy or they won't be happy together. I'm just saying, like, I still think it's weird. I think it's, I don't think they'll end up being together forever. I think that gap is really strong. And I think Drea's probably, what, not, how do you even? I mean, and, and maybe I'm leaning A 21 year old father. You think he wanted, and you I, think he did family planning and, with Drea? And, and I'll be honest with you, on the other end, I may be leaning into this. Yes, there was a lot of differences in, with us, but this is literally the age gap of me and my ex. I was 30, he was 47 when we met. Okay. We didn't come on here and y'all didn't bash me when I talked about my 17 year age. Someone in their 30s dating someone in their 40s is not as weird as a 21 year old man. Thank you. Like, we're really going to really act. It isn't right or wrong. It's opinion versus opinion. I'm just saying, like, that gap. I don't believe your gap, Mandy, is like the same as Drea's. You guys are both mature adults. You're in the workforce. Like, you've lived a life. You graduated college. You've had a phase of your fucking life. Like, come on, you could two can have conversations on the same fucking level. A 21 year old and a 39 year old woman is completely different. Not to mention it is fucking weird that you've now started a family dynamic with your son and your new boyfriend at the same age. Them having the same brain is weird. How are you going to lead my family? I ain't going to hold you. How? Niggas, niggas, in they, that, niggas in their 50s not leading families. I'm just so annoyed. <laughs> I swear to God. Like, I'm so annoyed with this age gap. Let's be very clear. Because of experience, <laughs> jobs, wh- whatever location you are, if you are middle America, you're not going to be as mature as if you get raised in New York City. Like, if you're in the South, you're not going to be the same as if you're raised in fucking Oklahoma. Fine. Like, like, to me, let's be very clear. This person is now, li- he's probably world traveled. He done been overseas. He got his passport. He fucking has to pay bills and do things at a younger age to where the maturity of this man cannot be just compared to just any old motherfucking 22-year-old. And so to me, we have to consider or be considerate of just where people are in their lives. And I'm I'm also sick of people sitting here victimizing these motherfucking athletes that know exactly what the fuck they're doing. Just like the hoes they fuck with. Know exactly what the fuck they're doing. No you think that... Here. Okay. All right. No I'm not gonna, the victim here. I think that you're feeling a way because I, you voiced that you're cool with, like... I was just dating a, a young, 22 year old. That's my yeah. point. I feel like that's why you're going hard. But, but no, it's not that I'm going hard. You just went really hard too. You believe it's weird. I believe that people, doesn't matter what age, some of it works, some of it doesn't. It's the person. Let's be very clear. Me at my grown age still had a lot of differences with my, with my ex that was 17 years older than me. Me at my age at 33 definitely had differences yeah, you. with the 22 year old that I was, that, that I was just dealing with. Like, at the end of the Maybe day, fucked up my outline. But no, nah, let's be very <laughs> no, bitch. You went you went off on a tangent. Let's be very clear. I also just believe that we're sitting here again. Why the fuck? I'm so glad I'm not doing this other podcast. Oh, I don't have to sit here and have opinions <laughs> about the decisions of everybody the fuck else. Because what works for me may not sit here in a line with all of y'all's motherfucking opinions. Did you and Bridget y'all was so argue upset like this? that I went back to that nigga thirteen times? Like, it is what it is. We all sit here and make these decisions that we feel fit us. I'll be honest, though. That 22-year-old motherfucker probably got the same goddamn capacity of a brain as a motherfucker who's 70. And from what I've been dealing with these motherfucking niggas, that's what it is. Not one age oh, is better than the next. Yes. Ooh, yeah, you have more fucking life, life experience. I mean, more bro, I, I, I have to be honest. In terms of even my friendships, like, I can't be friends with girls at that age because they're not able to withstand conversations at the level I am. Like, I can't take them out around niggas that I be with because they're fucking kids. I'm not, I understand you don't want to call them kids, but Manny, they're, I, I disagree with that. I don't know your youngest homegirl, but I, the youngest homegirl I have right now is 25 and I literally hit her up if I just want to go get drinks because she lives nearby me. There's nothing that, our lives are different. 
I get it because he's rich and wealthy and has a big job and goes on planes. Fine. But like that nigga probably didn't even have to do anything in college because he had a body. He could fucking make money off his he literal ability. There's a lot of niggas with they looks that can't hold a conversation. No, no, no. I'm talking about body like he was able to profit off of his sports ability. So you just like you said before, these niggas be dumb. These athletes be mm -hmm. dumb. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. And let's be very clear. I right. hung out with the pretty girls. Who's to say that Drea has the biggest, best vocabulary? Like, they actually may be on the same space. I maybe. go to L.A. a lot. Them bitches ain't got nothing to say. They're just pretty. So let's be very clear. I mean, they may I'm be a lie. right on the same Dre playing field. Drea, I think, may be a little bit different, even of though course. I don't. And I don't know her personally. So Well, no, no, no. I, I'm so saying Dre Drea's kind of, Drea's, Drea's done some work. Like, Drea's been able to make and keep up her millions and keep up a brand. And I think that's pretty good because a lot of these bitches have it. So whether, kind of like a Heather Sanders, right? They're able to like make a brand, keep their name going and, and recirculate that money, keep a check. I think that's why we, we like Drea. I mean, we as in like, I think there's girls online that have that quote unquote look that women are just like, oh, you don't really do much. I don't think Drea People is one of them. still say that about Kim. Like again, everybody gonna have an opinion. It, whether it's right or wrong, everybody gonna have a motherfucking opinion. People still be like, oh my God, Kim is only rich because of her looks. No. So to me, again, I just think we've all made... Kim is only rich because she's a, 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 a listen. And see, I Kim disagree Kim, with whatever you're about to say. I'm joking. See? Kim, Kim will keep see? a nigga. See? Kim will keep a nigga. And you now know what I'm saying. She's with Odell and I'm here for it. Listen. Drake probably mad. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think it's kind of weird when people are like, how many men has she dated? And I'm like, bro, she can't date a regular nigga. And neither can Drake. Okay, but there's Mandy. She's been out for the last what eighteen years. She probably eh, let me get the new the new bunch that's around. Drea and Kim Kardashian are not on the same level, baby. Drea can date a corporate nigga. Drea can date an exec. Drea can date a wealthy man. She does not have to be. Drea is not Kim Kardashian. Okay, but and she that, does that's, deserve. That's the hierarchy that you're putting them in. I think they are literally could date the same people. Because they're both hot? I, you just said that Dre is gorgeous. She deserves a rich nigga. I don't, I'm not going to compare a Dreya and a Kim. I don't have to compare their dollars or their beauty. I think that they deal with the same niggas. Let's be very clear. Me and Dreya Eskimo sisters. So I'm fucking the same niggas that these bitches is fucking, okay? Shit. Kim doesn't need to fucking get pregnant by a 21-year-old to have an upkeep lifestyle, bro. You just said that Dreya is a millionaire. Dreya probably didn't need to get... Pregnant by this man either. Okay, do you think Drea dated him because he's great? Or do you think she dated him because he's rich? That's another problem, I think. That man is attractive. So you're attractive and you're rich. It's not like he's an ugly nigga. I actually am Like, it ain't like he's Reggie on. Miller. I'm really curious if there's anyone... I know... I believe that anyone listening has an opinion that's left or right. I want to know in the comments on YouTube if any one of the things we said swayed your opinion the other way. Because you did bring up some great points, but I just... I don't know. I guess I can't never just want to go through the comments and see that she was right. No, I don't. Oh. I, I actually, well, I, I don't, I don't think, I think I, our I don't community. Feel like there's a right or wrong in this. I, mind you, when I say that, I did not mean it like that. Oh. I actually think more people will agree because from a sex positive perspective or woman empowerment perspective, they'll be like, if men can do it, why can't she? But you know what? Y'all niggas argue in the comments and maybe we'll do a part two on Patreon and read them. So, I did have an outline, but. We'll try it again next week. <laughs> uh, See, the thing is, we're wow. never going to talk about... <laughs> this is what we do, bro. You no, no, no. so petty, bro. No, I was just going to say, we'll never talk about current events again. No, 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 no. Did you agree to fight like that? I, I'm not going to lie. I don't want to talk current events like ever again. Well, it was part of the vanilla shit. I know. Yeah, Ed, and what the fuck are you doing? You're supposed to get this shit going. He's actually, no, been like this. I don't know if you've even been paying No, no, attention. no, not wrap up. You should have said, hey, ladies. Did you send him that you one? sex tip? Well, maybe he didn't. Did you send him the outline? Maybe you should include Edin into the production. Maybe you should shut the fuck up. Maybe you shouldn't be sitting here <laughs> trying to get on our Ecuadorian back then. Ecuadorian. Bitch, at least I made one, ho. <laughs> Nicaragua. Y'all, come and check us out at the Black Effect Festival. We're going to be in Atlanta on That's April, April 27th. 27th, There's baby. a lot of podcasts there. Our Poor Minds girls are going to be there. There's going to be... I'm really excited to see Gillian Wallow. Me too, me I've too. never seen Debbie Brown. I want to do a little meditation sesh with my girl. Can't yeah, wait to there's going to be some good Pretty people there. there. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going right up to Pretty B. I'm going to be like, hey, bitch, wasn't you laughing when Christina Mackey and Rick Ross broke up? 
<laughs> Again, current events. Um, also, make sure you check us out in London. The very following weekend, we will be in London at the Earth Theater that's May the 5th. Make sure you go to whorehive.com to get your tickets. And then at the very end of the month, on May the 27th, we will be a part of the Together Land Festival. It's headliners, bitch. Oop. And we will be on the Sunday well, night lineup. So make She's sure she's gonna take her horse to the altar. Ooh, all y'all say I'm gonna be out next Ew. week, bitch. I'm gonna be in Emily. So it's make like sure there. you go to I believe that's togetherlandfest.com and get your tickets now to see us live there. And y'all, Jesus Christ, this is all over the place, but this has been yet another episode of Horrible to And you love it. You love it all over the place. Just not like a come in my head. It's bonus, bitches. For those of you niggas that aren't spending another $5, we are now in 4K, 6K, or 6K if you're nasty. So upgrade to the next tier to see this episode on video. And if you're already looking at us, you're welcome because my titties are out. Are they? Yeah, they are kind of out. Sorry, hold and on. baby, I'm in here with a goddamn hoodie and sneakers because this weather is ridiculous. I just got back from fucking Miami, and I didn't know that I was coming back home to a snowstorm. Was it fucking Miami? or was um, it? it was sucking Miami. Um, Why wasn't I it fucking? Girl, because the nigga got too drunk and, throw up, and threw up all over himself. So, no dick took place there. So, yeah, and he's just like, I feel so terrible. And I'm like... You should. Yeah, you should. But also... Wait, how was it sucking? So well, because I sucked him before the Super Bowl, but then we had to all go watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> And so we Did all, ended up, we all, and oh girl came, came, like came and I had fun with it. Like I had my homegirl sit on the couch while I did it. Cause he kind of like, I'm trying to inch him to a threesome. He hasn't had like a threesome, 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 threesome with him? We fu- No, we fucked already before though. So I was like, girl, just come downstairs and watch me suck this nigga dick real quick. <laughs> and uh, so it's so funny cause he was so nervous and that's like my homegirl, homegirl. So she was like. Yes, bitch, that shit sound wet. Do it. You doing that thing. <laughs> but no, I literally was like, girl, just come down here and watch me suck this nigga dick real quick. Why didn't she join in and start well, sucking no, dick? Well, no, because I mean, he was so nervous even that. Like, he's sitting there, and, bitch, the game just started, and I'm like, nigga, you ain't finna make me miss Usher. We gotta go to this party. So I'm like going at his pants, and he literally just pulled it out. Then it's just sitting on his chest. So I like just go to, to start it sucking it. His dick is ginormous. His dick is amazing. Okay, so it was a good dick to watch. No, his dick is great. Well, no, she felt nervous to even look because he was so nervous. Bitch, he was just like this. Like, he was so... (laughs) Bitch, he was so fucking nervous. I was just like, oh my God, this is so annoying. Set the scene. So are you staying in the room with him? No, he gets me out. That's why she came. I get my own room every time he flies me out. Why? What do you mean, why? Because I do. And I sent him my first class ticket. I don't need to be all up under your shit. And I wanted to be with my friend. Like, I had invited her to the game. And he, like, like I, I was driving around with her. So I got my own room. When I went to when I go to, like, anywhere I go, I get my own room. And so I'll go to his room or he'll come to mine. But we don't sleep together. Like, we don't do all the cuddling and shit. It's okay, new. So anyway. Yeah, we so, don't do that. Well, no, you said it's new. But normally you do a Well, it's sleep- not new, new. Like, it's. The nigga that I would go and see, like, when, okay, my, well, ex, when my ex was So, you guys up. both come downstairs. Does he know she's coming we, downstairs? We went upstairs. Um, oh, wherever, sorry. Um, he now knew. He was on a he said, no, he knew. He said, uh, he said, both of y'all come down. And I was like, okay. And, of course, he was like, you trust her? I was like, bro, I'm not going to bring nobody around that I don't trust. So, but wait, hold on, hold on. So, he knew you were coming down to suck his dick? Yeah. Okay. That's what I was coming down for. Because I'm like, if you said both of y'all come That's down, why you coming so down scary? for? Because he don't, because he's scary. He's just scary. I couldn't imagine. I would not be the hoe I am today if I had to go through that type of party and shit that these girls have to go to. Literally, for y'all, I'll share what the experience is like. So a lot of like basketball players now don't like going to clubs because there's phones. They get drunk. They get shit They literally they make to- one. It's they, crazy. They make clubs. So... They'll like turn a restaurant or like a lounge into their own club. There'll be a DJ. There'll be an open bar. There's bottle service. Sorry. There's hookah. There's all the things except for niggas. The bottle service part is the weirdest part. It's by weird. The way. Oh, th- they were coming out with sparklers. I bro. went to one at the Mondrian. It was like you know when they were. I don't bro, know if you've been to one. Of I don't those. know. But basically, at the Mondrian in New York. 
there's this top floor. It's probably like a lounge anyway, but it turns into a club. So I walk in and I didn't know that type of party it was. I knew a ball player invited me, but I just kind of thought no. he was having drinks with friends because we're not fucking with each other. So it didn't really, he was like, yo, I'm in New York too, come through. So the bodyguard or the security looks at me and he's like, okay, she's cute, but is she invited to this party? I was like, I'm looking for my friend, so-and-so. And he's like, okay, well, you'd have to go upstairs. I was like, okay.